As Lori shared, I lead the work of the U.S. Impact Investing Alliance, which seeks to build the field of impact investing in order to manifest a more equitable economic system. Catalytic Capital is absolutely foundational to this work, and I look forward to exploring this topic with our, our all-star group of panelists in a moment. But first, just a couple words to help set the stage uh, and off to, so I can offer a brief overview of Catalytic Capital. So if we think about the spectrum of capital from traditional investing that seeks to maximize financial returns and indeed short-term financial returns on, on one end and philanthropic or grant capital or grant making that is motivated first by impact, social, economic, or environmental considerations with not only no financial return, but full, full capital loss, of course, because it's a, it's a grant. We feel like catalytic capital sits in the middle and the middle is sort of a spectrum that we'll explore today. Um, and Laurie, if you could put up the, the slide, uh, that would be great. Um, we consider catalytic capital to be impact first, but that doesn't necessarily mean that these strategies are always concessionary. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. And I'll share a little bit more about this. Um, and what Laurie is showing here is Tideline's 2019 framework uh, that outlines the myriad ways a catalytic, the capital can be catalytic to seed, scale, and sustain the work of investees. Uh, so there are the five Ps that you see here, and I'm gonna give you an example of each. So investments can be catalytic uh, in terms of price. This is perhaps the best known concessionary catalytic investment strategy. And this would be, an example of this would be providing a low cost interest rate loan to a local intermediary like a CDFI, community development finance institution, that in turn passes through uh, a favorable rate of interest to their underserved clients and communities. Uh, second is pledge. Uh, this is another way that funding can be, investments can be catalytic. And in this example, a funder would provide a guarantee or a credit enhancement to help de-risk an investment to crowd in additional capital that maybe are not uh, as impact oriented as the catalytic, uh, catalytic capital investor. Third is position. That's another way to incent more traditional investors into a deal, into a project, into a fund by taking a subordinated position in the capital stack. Um, catalytic capital can also be patient, the fourth P, uh, through long-term investments um, or patient capital. That's a norm that has uh, risen to the level of a best practice for supporting impact enterprises and uh, impact nonprofits that have earned revenue strategies. And this is especially the case coming out of the 2020 pandemic and related crises. The final P, purpose, um, is uh, accepting non-traditional terms to meet the needs of investees. So here we might consider the growing trend around participatory investment structures, which embed impacted community members in the governance and decision-making directly. So there, there are so many ways that, further ways that cat, uh, capital can be catalytic and our, our, our guests will talk about that in a moment. Um, it's also important to note that the recipients of catalytic capital, typically, again, impact institutions, enterprises, entrepreneurs, shouldn't think of the use case as a one size fits all. So investees can leverage this type of capital in a variety of ways, from helping to build a track record of impact and financial success, to crowding into additional investors, like I mentioned a moment ago, to facilitating risk-taking for innovation and experimentation, and many more examples. There are a number of us in the field that say that catalytic capital serves as the R&D or research and development arm of the broader impact investing movement, helping to seed innovative edge riding impact investing structures and market infrastructure. Coming out of the global crises of 2020, we've observed a material shift in the role of catalytic capital as impact investors, foundations, even mainstream financial and corporate actors stepped in to mobilize efficient and flexible impact capital uh, to the pandemic and economic response, recovery and resiliency interventions. 
we're in a different time now, uh, for better or for worse. Uh, we face a very difficult macroeconomic environment, very difficult geopolitical landscape, shifting geopolitical landscape, which at times threatens the communities and stakeholders we care about uh, domestically and um, in the global south. So it's worth considering what the ideal role of cap catalytic capital and the ideal role of impact investing will be in the months and years ahead. Um, undoubtedly, catalytic capital is an essential tool for investors to, to use alongside government and philanthropic funding to advance the SDGs. We know that, um, that no one sector, institution, or source of funding is capable of tacking, tackling these complex interwoven uh, challenges alone. We need to engage all our tools across the impact investing spectrum from the deep impact cat catalytic capital solutions you'll hear about today to advancing impact at scale through engaging the public markets. There's deep impact in the public markets, though it's uh, for the most part opaque to stakeholders. Beyond this essential question, uh, today we are also going to explore how we as investors and impact leaders can catalyze action on a broad set, set of systemic issues, which Laurie brought up in his introductory remarks. We'll also discuss today the urgency of the moment that I mentioned that I mentioned a moment ago, uh, how we can widen the tent to bring these tools to a broader set of investor groups, and the opportunities and challenges we face when scaling catalytic capital strategies. So with that framing in mind, I am delighted to introduce our fast, fantastic lineup of panelists for today. So I'll briefly introduce each of you and then we'll get into discussion. So John Balbach serves as Director of Impact Investments at the MacArthur Foundation, leading initiatives such as Benefit Chicago, as well as the catalytic capital and impact investing efforts for the foundation's climate solutions big bet. John previously managed and raised capital for an impact investing fund focused on developing the Michigan life sciences sector and served as a strategic advisor to hundreds of founders of technology startup ventures through a Michigan economic development program. And of course, MacArthur founded the Catalytic Capital Consortium um, partially in partnership with Rockefeller Foundation and the Midiar Network. The Catalytic Capital Consortium both invests and in, get invest cat, catalytic capital to investment funds and grant makes uh, to field build around this essential topic. Sam Bonzi is the co-founder and executive director of The Impact, which is a global network of families committed to making more impact investments, uh, making them making more impact investments and making them more effective. effective. Sam is also the vice chair of the board of directors and the chair of the investment committee of Keller Enterprises, a family office committed to values aligned investing. And finally, Tracy Palangin is the CEO and co-founder of Social Finance, a national nonprofit that builds innovative partnerships and impact investments to measurably improve lives. Since 2011, Social Finance has mobilized over $350 million to drive improved outcomes in education, economic mobility, health and housing. Tracy is also a member of the Harvard Corporation and serves on the boards of CERNA Foundation and the Boston Foundation. And she also serves as co-chair of the US Impact Investing Alliance. So welcome all. And um, let's get into uh, discussion. So I would love to ask each of you this question and John, maybe I can ask you to start, then Sam, then Tracy. From your unique vantage point, what is the core purpose of catalytic capital now and in the future as we seek to build an impact economy? 